so yeah, anyway, um, we would like for one thing that I would like to touch on is. Uh, in particular, the whole debacle around GTK4 and Liba Dueta and uh, not supporting teams and all that, right? Um, that's a conversation that like kind of speaks to me because I have been a script kid myself. I have been customizing my uh, my Linux desktop back in the GNOME two days with obnoxious themes and and broken icon themes. I've done all of that and. People still still keep doing that, and I think that that's that's amazing to a certain extent because like it shows some form of creativity and like will of self expression, um, and like as long as users do that, I'm totally fine with that. Um, and in particular, like just as a like um, as a general thing, uh, there's this misconception, or well, it's not a misconception; it's like an actual thing. But the, uh, anyway, GTK. Three and four and Libadueta do not support themes. Mm -hmm. They just they do have something that resembles a theme engine mm -hmm. uh, there. Uh, that's like the like you can inject CSS into applications, uh, but that's very much not a, like it has been used for theming, but it's not a theming thing. Uh, in particular, it's used as far as I know. It's used mostly for like the accessibility things, so the high contrast stuff and. Uh, also used by developers to make custom looking widgets uh, in their applications. Uh, and it's actually like being able to use CSS for that. I think it's actually pretty awesome because everyone knows, well, most of everyone knows uh, CSS. It's so, pretty easy to learn if you uh, like. Yeah, I mean, and like it's made specifically for that styling stuff, right? One add border, like making something look like a card, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an API that exists and people like, um, in the GNOME tree or well GTK tree era, um, have used that quite successfully, I'd say, for theming. So changing the default appearance of applications. Uh, and again, as far as the user, as long as the user does it, it's perfectly fine. Like you, you're messing with your system, you're uh, perfectly fine to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the moment that some someone like uh, a company making distribution, like it doesn't have to be a company, you know, like a distribution does it, right? Yeah. Uh, say Ubuntu wants to apply their orange and purple branding to two applications. Mm -hmm. At that point, you're kind of like walking a fine line here because those toolkits don't really support that, right? It's as if like... Um, as if you were like a, a manufacturer for a computer, let's say like a random brand, Right, uh, making making laptops, and you decided like the Windows installation that you ship has to have the Windows logo changed with uh, the brand logo. Right, that's mm -hmm. just something dumb. Well, first off, there are licensing agreements that prevent you from doing that, but also you're gonna break a lot of stuff <laughs> for doing that. Even just changing like the, the little Windows logo, uh, people are gonna are gonna look for the 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 start button, like the Windows button. And they're not gonna find it, and they're gonna complain. They're gonna say, "Oh, uh, Windows is crap, and uh, uh, it, it's difficult." They they change the start button. Well, they, they well they, they have re they can have reasons to say that Windows is crap, uh, but uh, that that wouldn't be a good reason, um, because what happens is that the user, without knowing it, has their user experience. Uh, completely broken by a mostly aesthetic choice that was out of the control of the original developer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, again, as long as you, the user, are the one making the change, that's perfectly fine because you know that you touched the thing, right? But the moment you're like, when it, that's not the case, then you're just breaking the, the you're breaking the user experience. And what happens at that point with open source software? It happens that like I don't know uh, Ubuntu. Let's I, I keep. Uh, like using Ubuntu as an example, uh, the, I have no particularly bad feelings uh, for Ubuntu well, apart Ubuntu, from Snap. Ubuntu, but... what they ship isn't really GNOME because they they like to like backport specific patches as well. Like it's this weird like amalgamation thing. That's also something that is well within the realm of what they can do, but I wish they would do it differently. Uh, I'll maybe touch on that later. Uh, anyway, let's say like. The, they break something. They change an icon that doesn't look like what it was supposed to be, uh, and it doesn't work anymore for for applications. Right? Mm -hmm. What happens at that point? 
the user is gonna the user is gonna look at that particular application and say, oh, this application is broken. Let me go file an issue, and you're gonna see an issue filed for a problem that was not caused by you and that you have no control over. And what I've seen happen in these cases is, what I think is the best solution is say, this is not my problem. I won't fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, go complain to Ubuntu or whatever else might be the case. Uh, the other thing that I've seen is the developer of the application puts in a specific like rule uh, so that uh, if a certain condition is met, the application is going to behave differently. So it's basically like creating more and more complexity in the application. Mm -hmm. And what happens to that, and, and I, I have been, um, um, I have done that in the past. Uh, like for example, uh, at some point I tried to um, cater to um, people that didn't like um, client-side decoration mm -hmm. uh, aesthetically. Um, we'll definitely talk about that a bit as well. That's a that's a big one. Yeah, that's that's the thing where I have a little less of a strong opinion. Well, I have an opinion, but it's okay. Let's uh, not, that. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, anyways, um, so I at some point like. Uh, put in support like a toggle for having server-side decorations in feeds, I think it was, mm -hmm. back when it was still GTK3. And uh, I kept doing that for more and more things. And at, 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 at a certain point, the settings menu for feeds was just like a bunch of random dials that like I was, I, it didn't make any sense. Um, and like on top of that, that's just like the tip of the iceberg. Because on top of that, I uh, suddenly had a bunch of edge cases that I had to think about where my application was not behaving right or outright just breaking uh, because there was some combination of options that I didn't test for, right? So it became more and more of a burden to the point that basically I was having difficulties doing anything to the application. I couldn't, I couldn't touch it because it would break. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, it clicked. Uh, user preference is difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a given thing that you should be able to change everything. And at some point, you either decide to stop development and like just have it like this and not, not touch it anymore, uh, or you just start removing stuff that you don't want. Mm -hmm. Right? You start like uh, like create the, like working around a particular vision that you have, and you just stop uh, like wasting precious resources uh, chasing around random people that want this or that different, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And to that extent, I feel that um, the same argument can be made for uh, what's been done with uh, Liba uh, okay. Because with Liba like, like it or not, like the styling being flat and all, very much a stylistic choice. Mm -hmm. Like we, uh, people have different preferences, that's fine. Anyway, that's like the direction that, um, the GNOME developers uh, or uh, the developers behind Viva Dueta uh, wanted to make. That was an agreed on choice. The people actually putting the work to develop the thing and that would have like uh, that would have uh, benefit from uh, that particular library uh, agreed basically on what was and wasn't um, desirable and they just did a thing. And mm. uh, at, at this point um, with Viva Dueta and GTK4, I can happily say that, uh, in my experience, GDK4 is with with Leba Dueta is one of the best uh, toolkits mm -hmm. uh, for developing desktop applications. Period. Why is that? Because it's straightforward enough. Um, you have like complex widgets uh, that are uh, already made for you that you can just use with very little work put on it. And you can have a sleek looking application without having to either be a designer and like making your own design decisions, um, or without having to like put in the work needed to have some certain thing work in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I like back in the GTK three days, that was the case for some things There there were some, uh, like applications doing some fancy stuff uh, that like you as a developer, uh, if you wanted to implement that as well, like I see, I don't know, uh, the just to say a random thing, the um, Pi uh, spinning like uh, a Pi thing in Nautilus uh, for like when you're doing file transfers. Uh... There's like a loader that looks like a Pi that gets filled up as oh, the transfer. Oh, sure, sure, sure. It, okay, yep, yep, yep. okay, something like that. Uh, I'm not sure about GTK4. It's a little bit different in the latest now to us. But anyway, back like 
back in GTK3, um, that particular thing, if you wanted it in your application, you had to implement it yourself. Like you, like your best bet was like uh, going through the nautical source code and possibly copying some stuff around if your application was made in C. Otherwise, you would have to translate it to whatever language uh, you were using. And that's not necessarily a great thing, <laughs> particularly like if you want to. Like if you want to make an, applic an application that not just functions well, but that also looks to like looks good to your particular taste, mm -hmm. having stuff like this, I think, uh, makes a big difference, uh, and that's what like makes um, platform applications uh, pretty uh, pretty to look at, like um, um, nice to use and stuff like that. And that's I, I could say that's the example for stuff like Android and uh, iOS to a certain extent, where you do have this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's also the case for things like uh, Kirigami. Uh, as far as I know, they are doing basically most of the same things. Of course, the design the, uh, vision is different. The implementation is totally different. But the idea is very much uh, that same one. And the implementation, I must say, is actually quite good. I don't develop Qt or, or Kirigami, but I do use some uh, uh, Kirigami apps, and I think that they're they look they look good. Uh, they they they. I prefer personally the Libra Dueta styling, but that's like totally be, beside the point. Sure. Um, when you go back to something like GTK or even to some extent extent Qt, mm -hmm. as far as I know, you don't have all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Or like if you want to go even more more like custom made something like Electron, right? Because in Electron you're just making a website, right. like the interface is a website you're using web technologies. You don't have anything. Well, at Without that point a, you do a, have access to CSS to, uh, frameworks, which you you do have access to CSS, offer, but depending on or CSS framework specifically, which may offer you something akin to that. Depend, like, it's not as as clean, but there are there is certainly something there with the web. But mostly that's not designed for making applications. Though. Sure. That's sure. designed yeah, for that's websites. Fair. Yeah. Okay, that can fair. work for some things. Like material material design is like like it or not, works fairly well for both websites and applications, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a good example. But still, at that point, you're not gonna theme it because it doesn't support like user theming. Mm -hmm. Um and like the same example can be done for stuff like um like proprietary applications for once. Uh, like, for example, Steam is uh, one proprietary application that we all uh, know and love, particularly in the Linux community. Uh, Steam technically supports Steam, uh, sort of. It's like I haven't ever used the theme for Steam that worked actually uh, without breaking anything. Um, so that's not non themable and like if you even just move to the proprietary uh operating system scene right uh android ios mac os windows are any of those themable except for maybe a dark preference or an accent color not I on general basis no so. at least without not going I mean, and like doing some weird breaking stuff if not intended. oh yeah windows users windows users will go out of the way to have a shortcut to i don't know uh, stop automatic updates, uh, something like that. Something, something. It's not the intended behavior. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> and that's like that's fine for most people. And uh, as far, well, it, it may be annoying that, for example, I, I I don't like the obnoxious white of the light theme of Windows. That's a lucky thing that I don't use Windows, but. Regardless, uh, from time to time, I find myself using someone else's computer, and I just open the file manager, and and like I go blind for five seconds. Um, so that's the thing. Uh, but there's nothing you can do about it, mm -hmm. and that's again something you might or might not like. But that's within the um, the realm of the decisions that the developer takes, mm -hmm. and. Again, the lucky thing we have in, in, in the Linux space is that, for one, if we don't like something, if it's open source, we can fork it, we can make it our own. Mm 